Is Juan Montoya making a shock return to the NASCAR Cup Series? Plus, Corey LaJoy says that he wants to be the first driver to win for Spire, despite being fired at the end of the season. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Exciting news. We've acquired a new piece for the office decoration here. It is a photo of our Lord and Savior, well, Canadian version, Lance Stroll the, from the 2024 Canadian, no, Chinese Grand Prix. My apologies there. So my friends went to the Canadian Grand Prix and part of the ticket package was a framed photo of Lance Stroll's car. Why? I have no idea, but I'm glad that they decided to give it to me and now we'll put it up. Where's it going to go? Eh, maybe it'll go above the TV. Maybe it'll go on the Zoom background wall over here that you guys can't see for my professional job, which still gets blurred out every time because it has the skeleton helmet heads over there. And eh, sometimes when you're on a marketing call, not the best thing to have in the background. Regardless, still kind of an interesting piece. And the fact that they had to mail all those out to people is perplexing, but I digress. Getting into the actual information in the news of the day, it appears that Juan Pablo Montoya will make a shock return to the NASCAR Cup Series later this year, driving for 2311 Racing in that number 50 car, the open car that they randomly will field every now and then. It was a 67 last year. Obviously, they're doing a partnership with Mobile One. This year, it is Mobile's 50th anniversary, so obviously that's why it's number the 50 car. They ran Kamui Kobayashi earlier this year at Coda, and he got stenthoused all over the place there. Ricky Stenthouse refuses to let let Kamui Kobayashi finish a race without getting dumped at least once, sometimes twice, and he's doing it for America, I assume. And then they also ran Corey Heim at Nashville before it devolved into absolute chaos at the end, and he was running top 15 most of the day and what, his third Cup Series start, I believe is what it was at that point. So strong, strong performance for him. Now the team posted a bit of a teaser clip on uh, Twitter on you know Thursday afternoon. And you can't tell me that that's not Juan Pablo Montoya right there. Denny Hamlin, apparently the Willy Wonka of the NASCAR Cup Series garage, doesn't look anything like Gene Wilder, but it's fine. Uh, handed a golden ticket to Juan Pablo Montoya, apparently, because that's definitely Juan's hairline. That's definitely his gray hair. And it, by all accounts, does seem like he's about to make his return to the NASCAR Cup Series for the first time since 2014. That's a decade for those of you that are right now counting on your fingers. How long has that been? Yeah, a long time. He hasn't even raced this generation of car. The last time he was in a NASCAR uh, Cup Series car was the Brickyard 400 in 2014, driving for uh, Team Penske back when he was driving for them in IndyCar as well. And they allowed him to do a couple, well, two NASCAR races. Can't get, they can't have too much fun. It is Team Penske after all, but they did let him run two series in one year, which is just, that's like, that's a party for Roger. That's going out and buying bottle service and spending a couple grand on a table in Las Vegas. I, that That's pretty extreme, honestly, for Team Penske to allow their drivers uh, to do that, especially a guy like Juan, but he's Juan Montoya, right? He can do anything. He's a Formula One race winner. He's an Indy IndyCar race winner champion. Uh, he's a NASCAR Cup Series winner, NASCAR Cindy Series winner. The guy just wins in everything that he gets in. He hasn't been in a uh, competitive race since 2023. Obviously, last year he ran some LMP2 stuff over in Europe. He also did some IMSA stuff as well, 2023 and 2022. But for Juan, it's an interesting return if it is, in fact, Juan Montoya that is making his return. Obviously, I'm going to assume that it's going to be on a road course later this year. Probably going to be at Watkins Glen. If I was going to bet my money on it, I would put money on it being at Watkins Glen. Uh, for Juan because, yeah, it's a track he's won at before, right? He has two NASCAR Cup Series wins, one at uh, Watkins Glen, the other one at Sonoma. Should have won the Breakout 400, like I mentioned before, and he swears on his children's lives that it didn't happen. I guess a good thing for Juan is Kevin Harvick's not going to be in that race at Watkins Glen, so we're not going to have to see those two get together, but... I would assume that he would be competitive, right? Everybody talks about how the new Gen 7 NASCAR Cup Series car is modeled after a GT3, essentially. It, you know, that's the closest comparison that we have to it. And we've seen a lot of sports car guys come over and be able to adapt to it pretty quickly. Obviously, Shane Van Gisbergen is a perfect example of that. Jensen Button as well. Kamui Kobayashi had good lap times last year at Coda and this year at Coda obviously circumstances don't always um, allow for a decent finish, but it does feel like these guys can adapt to it a lot quicker. Jordan Taylor as well. And for Juan, maybe this is going to be a good outing for him. Uh, it's an interesting one uh, for a guy that hasn't been in the Cup Series for a decade at this point, hasn't been in a stock car in a decade to just hop back in and, and do a one-off is going to be tough, especially with the limited practice that the NASCAR Cup Series has. He's going to get like 20 minutes in the car, then he's going to have to qualify and go right into the race. Obviously, he's going to more than likely make the race. I don't see more than 40 cars showing up for Watkins Glen. Uh, for Juan, though, 
it's cool. He's Juan Montoya. The dude should be allowed to do whatever he wants. Guy's an absolute badass behind the wheel. Maybe one of the most talented just on raw skill. Top 10 ever just in terms of his raw ability. The guy can wheel absolutely anything. We talk about a diverse racing schedule, a di diverse racing resume. Juan Pablo Montoya absolutely exudes that. The guy has gotten in sports cars and won, IndyCar won, Formula One, he's won, NASCAR, he's won. What other type of car do you want this guy to get in? I mean, he is only one win away from a triple crown. We talk about that with Alonzo all the time, but Montoya is just one uh, 24 hours of Le Mans away from doing it. It's cool to see him come back. Yeah, people are going to make the jet dryer jokes, but hey, it's Juan Montoya. Today's video is sponsored by Driven Sunglasses. Once again, use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. I have a new bra or Driven shirt on. I'm going to say BREAKHARD shirt. No, this is a Driven shirt. Use code BREAKHARD. Uh, I wear the sunglasses. Shane Van Gisbergen wears the sunglasses. Josh Berry, Ryan Priest, and maybe you can as well. So check out their website today. Moving on to the other big topic that happened on Thursday. Corey LaJoy went on his podcast, Stacking Pennies, this week and talked about his termination from Spire Motorsports at the end of the 2024 season, where he will be replaced by somebody. Who is that? That uh, remains to be seen. But Corey LaJoy went on to his podcast and he said that he wants to be the first driver to hang a wind banner at Spire, which is slightly confusing. So he said, quote, I'm pretty motivated to still be the first one to put a wind banner on the wall at Spire. A real one. They had a trophy, but that wasn't really a real team back in the day. <laughs> you serious? So some of you are sitting around right now going like, didn't Justin Haley get them their first victory back in 2019 at the Summer Daytona race? Yes, you would be correct that he did, in fact, do that, regardless if you think it's a legitimate win or not. As Corey somewhat insinuated right there, a rain shortened win is still a win. Joey Logano's first win came that way. Jeff Gordon's won races that way. Bubba Wallace, I know people don't want to credit him for that Talladega win. Rain shortened races happen, you know, not fairly often, but when they do, that's what happens. You're just the guy that happens to be there at the end for that. And hey, NASCAR had every intention of going back to green, but a lightning strike and then more rain delayed that. And that's just how 2019's Daytona summer race ended. And Justin Haley was in position to take that win. And he got it. That is a legitimate win. It happens from time to time. Heck, Dale Jr.'s last one was a rain shortened win. Is that not legitimate now? But for Corey to say that, it's you know a bit confusing. It sounds like a scorned lover. And I'll be honest. I listened to the entire podcast. It's about 40 minutes long, and it takes some turns here and there. And at the end of it, I got done and just went, what in the Matt De Benedetto was that? That is not the way to land a ride for 2025. In his podcast, he goes on to talk about wanting to be the first one to win, which, OK, you can maybe say that you think that you've built up this team. OK, fine, whatever. Sure, the 77 back when back in the day, 2019. That was driven by Justin Haley, basically out of the premium motorsports shop. Spire was just the name on the car. OK, if you want to say that, like now that you guys have established a team, and you want to be the first one to put up a wind banner in the new shop. OK, like I can I can get behind that. And let me say, I think Corey LaJoy is a nice guy. I've seen him interact with people on pit road. Couldn't be more hospitable. Couldn't be a nicer guy. Does a lot of charity work. And he's just a racer's racer. The guy just wants to drive race cars. And I think we can all get behind that. But man, this podcast just really didn't seem to do him very many favors in probably the eyes of a lot of people. He said that he obviously wants to be the first one to get them their win. He thinks that they're still a threat on super speedways, and he thinks that they're a threat on road courses, and that part has me pretty perplexed as well. He said he's done a lot of work to get better on road courses, and I'm not here to deny that at all. He definitely has if you look at his numbers. But his best finish on a road course is still only P11, and I would not consider him to ever have been a threat to win on a road course, not unless, like, People are going to start running out of gas or they all get caught up in a wreck or something like Indy um, happens where they all hit the hit the curb and it comes apart and wrecks half the field. Maybe then you could maybe inherit one. But I just don't see him being a guy that's going to contend for the win on speed alone. But. Uh, you know, crazier things have, of course, happened in the Cup Series. He also goes on to talk about how running mid-pack in the Cup Series is more, you know, intriguing to him than getting into a competitive Xfinity car. He also talks a lot about how drivers have budget behind them and can come in and buy rides and make financial things happen. And he does sound a bit beaten down by the system with that one. And I can get behind that to an extent, right? I think we all get tired of watching guys come in and buy rides just because a family has money or, you know, they bring a sponsor along with them and they, you know, maybe don't have the racing resume to be there. But at the same time, Corey LaJoy still does not have a win in NASCAR's top three series, where some of those other guys that are pay drivers and do bring budget along with them certainly do. Uh, will that be a... He does say 
he does preface and say that he does not know who's getting in the seven car. And he's not saying that as a guy that brings money along and bought the ride out from underneath him or anything like that. He's not saying that. Uh, but what he is saying is, you know, maybe those people are taking opportunities away from a guy like him. And, you know, that's an argument that can certainly be made. But for Corey LaJoy, it's comes down to numbers. And he even talks about that on there. He's like, when you look at racing reference and he's like, numbers never lie. And he's not wrong. And then he tries to essentially justify what the numbers are. But he does not have a top 10 finish on a non-drafting track, like 230 races or so in the Cup Series, still doesn't have a top 10 on a non-drafting track. His teammates, both rookies this year, both of them have top 10s on non-drafting tracks this season. I mean, Zane Smith got one last year when he was running select races uh, over at Front Row Motorsports in the Coke 600. Carson Hosevar has done it multiple times this year, and Corey LaJoy is still looking for that first top 10, and that's really what it comes down to, I think. When Spire looks at him, they want to make a big splash. They're spending a lot of money. They're making big changes. They're adding big things over at that shop. They want to have a driver in there that they think is capable of winning, capable of continuing to make it into the playoffs. And we've seen with Carson Hosovar this year, they definitely have speed at times. And Corey even admitted, he's like, there's probably been three or four races this year where we've been absolute duds. And he's not wrong. Again, numbers don't lie. But to kind of go on the podcast like he did, I just don't think that was maybe the best PR move. And now I could be crazy, right? He could just go out there and land a decent ride for next year. I don't know where, because most of the places that are going to have seats open probably are going to ask him to bring some budget along. And he does have good partnerships, right? He talks about having and trying to cultivate all those relationships that he has. And he does have some good, you know, sponsors behind him. None that are capable of landing him a big time ride or you know, funding an entire season, but can certainly help supplement the budget there. So for him, there's, you know, a college ride that is open. There's Rick where racing might have a seat open as well, but you know, majority of the big time seats are, are filled or already have names attached to them that just haven't been announced yet. And I'm just not sure where Corey LaJoy slots in, in the cup series. I would argue that going down to the truck series or the Xfinity series, as much as he might not want to do it and getting into something that is competitive down there and winning is a great way to, you know, get that first win off your back, get some confidence and try to move back up. But man, I just, I don't think that podcast was the right direction to go. So let me know in the comments what you think about Juan Pablo Montoya randomly coming back and also about Corey's podcast and what he said. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.